Hey, 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 welcome. It's your girl, Tamika Hall here. Thank you to everybody that is joining me live, either on the radio or we are live on video. Thank you so much for joining me once again for the Tamika Hall experience. Yo, I'm hyped because I got DJ I Rock Jesus. I mean, like the legend himself hanging out with me in the virtual studio. It doesn't get hey. much better than that. How you doing today? Come on. I'm doing good. It's a blessing. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. It's yeah, awesome. I mean, so, I mean, like, what does it feel like to hear words like legend? Because I know I'm not the first person to ascribe that word to you. What does that feel like to be a legend now in, in the industry? It feels, to me, it feels great. I love it because I have to thank God because I'm still relevant. You know what I mean? Even, even though they call me a legend, I've been doing it for so long, I still feel blessed. I still feel relevant. So it's a blessing to me to love it. That I'm still here doing it. And he called me a legend. It feels <laughs> so, good to me. So talk to me. Feels talk good. To us. Feels good. How long have you been in the industry? Like, when did you get started? In the, in the Christian or the mainstream? You know what? Let's, let's, let's go all the way back. Even before you came to the kingdom. All the way back. Just, let's go. Well, I don't think, I'm not saying it like that. <laughs> but let's go back to before right, kingdom. Right, not like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, not I'm being sorry. disrespectful. Before <laughs> kingdom. Yeah. BC. Let's go before right, Christ. Right. <laughs> I started, I started DJing in 1980. I started in 80, but I actually started DJing in 82. I actually, I actually go out and public DJ in 82. So how did you know that, like, you had the goods? Because look, now, I was born in 1980. So um, back okay. then, though, in the 80s, DJing had a totally different feel, and I think even a different type of pressure yeah. than it does now. So back yes. in the 80s, like, how did you oh, know yeah, that you had the goods to do it and to call yourself a well, DJ? Well, actually, I watched my brothers before me DJ. I watched them. I learned from them. Uh -huh. And then when I started DJing, I started playing mess with the music. I was like, I think I can do this. You know what I mean? But it was teaching me on how to watch the crowd, learn your music, learn your equipment. So when I started doing that, I said, yeah, this is for me all day long. So, you know, I started keep doing, I was doing like strip clubs and, and toga parties and block parties. And I was doing all that. So I knew this was what I was supposed to be doing. So I loved it. I loved it. I love entertaining people. Okay, so let me just ask you this, and I don't, I, I, I know everybody's going to be like, Tamika, what is wrong with you? Because I own a radio station. So, you know, people will be like, yo, that's DJ I Rock Jesus on the ones and twos. Like, so back then, that was because you had two turntables, right? Isn't that what that meant? Right, correct, correct. So does that actually yes, apply yes, now? I mean. Do the ones and twos apply now? Yes, because I still, I still rock my turntables. No! I still rock my turntables. Do you? Yeah, I still oh, so have you're my for turntables real, for right real. behind me. I still I'm for real, for real. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, still, and I do use controllers too, but I also have my turntable. I love my turntable. Well, because, you know, now a lot of DJs, I mean, well, how do you feel about it? And I'm sure you're probably very gracious. You probably don't think any way about it. But, you know, there's so many people now calling themselves DJs, but now there's software that really kind of yeah. does all that stuff. So do you feel like they're bona fide enough to be able to be like, that's Tamika Hall on the ones and twos? Because I wouldn't be on the ones and twos. I would be on my computer like, what, 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 well, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that yes, I can't say you can't be a DJ because remember, this is a different time. Technology, a lot of guys was raised up in technology. I was raised up on turntables and take bags and real to real and things like that. So if somebody come up there as a DJ and they on their laptop or control now turntables, they're a DJ because that's what they was raised up in. So yeah. I like that. That that's a really good answer. Okay. So talk to us. So you went from like where people were do you know you were DJing and having to spin the song Rump Shaker to you you found <laughs> right. look I remember Rump Shaker I don't care what anybody says like that beat is still <laughs> hot today whatever like it's somebody still crazy there. right it's I still love God but like you know that's that song still has a vibe okay it's move. It's yeah. It's move right. yeah. yeah so you went from DJing and strip clubs and stuff when did you find Christ and you said I'm gonna walk away from this because with you, you know, DJing block parties and strip clubs and parties, yeah. and, and I'm sure you were probably doing things with celebrities and stuff. There's a lot of money with that. And so at yeah. some point, you had to make a decision to walk away from the celebrity, the money that comes from the secular realm, and you said, God, 
I'm going to rock, literally, I'm going to rock for you. So what was the defining moment for you? The defining moment was, was when my wife, I came home from work. I know if I came home from work and she said she can't do it no more. Now she got saved before I did. So she came and she said, that's it, girl, I can't do it no more. She had her bags packed and everything. I was like, okay, cool, because I was still partying, I was drinking, I was smoking, and all that stuff. Like that. So I was kind of happy, like, okay, she's gone. Because what she was doing, she was, she was doing a lot of praying in the house. So a lot of things were going on I couldn't do because she was doing a lot of praying. So oh, I was kind of happy, like, okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. So she left. <laughs> so I, was, I watched her leave. And then as I was going to my music room to, 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 you know, to get high and stuff, I kept walking. Mm. And then I got pushed to the ground in, front, in, in our bedroom. I looked up and I saw a figure. Um, I knew who it was, but I didn't see who it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just saw a shadow. Mm -hmm. And he said, Gary, this path has been down. This path you haven't been down. So I saw myself getting up and walking down a narrow path. I knew it was Jesus. And when I got up from that moment, the alcohol, the pornography, mm -hmm. the drugs, the cocaine, the, um, the cigarette smoking, all that was gone just like that. So, wow. and I called my wife back and she came back home and she told me she was gone for seven hours. Now I feel like I was down for a quick second. Right. So from that moment, that's when I knew that this is what God's called me to do is to become a, you know, do a Christian DJ. You. There is so much that I think we could glean just from that right there, because number one, for the woman or the man that is praying for their spouse to make a change, the fact yes. that, because obviously she loved you, yes. you know, obviously she loves you, you know? And so it's yes. like for her to, to, to say, yeah. I'm going to stand for Christ above everything. I cannot do this anymore. And I'm choosing to pivot and walk away from you, the love of my life. I'm going to walk away from you. And even yes. the fact that you were very transparent and said, yo, I was happy because she could stop praying in the house and making me feel convicted. <laughs> I can do what I got to do. But the fact that <laughs> yeah. God literally put right, you right. in your face. And he shifted you. Yes, yes. What a blessing for people yes. to be able to just to yes. just hear that, to hear that. I, yes. I just wow. Did, yeah. That's amazing it for me. Amazing. So, it was amazing. So how hard was it then? Um, because it's like even though God will show himself large in our life, we still have to go back to reality. Yes. So when you decided to make the pivot, yes. was yes. it difficult at all? Because I'm sure even at some point, like Randy, I need to I need to interview Randy as well. But when you know, Randy, yes. people don't even know. Like, I'm sure you're the same way. He knows Jay-Z. Like, he just knows all these people. And when he decided to, yes. to go the kingdom route, he experienced where people were like, dude, yes. like, what you, you know, what are you doing? Did you experience that? I, a lot of that. I mean, I knew a lot of drug dealers. I knew a lot of people, celebrities and stuff. They laughed at me. Like, yo, man, whatever, man. Here, take this right here. They was, like, joking me. And, like, I said, no, this is for real. You know what wow. I mean? Like, nah, bro. I mean, it was it was rough. It was rough, but I realized that I changed. It's not me no more. That that wasn't me anymore. You know what I mean? So I had to walk away from all that. I so love it. Was it. Rough. it was rough. So it was rough. okay. So where'd you come up with DJ I Rock Jesus? Well, first of all, what was your DJ my name? Wife, if I can ask you. My my name was Rock Master Gary. I don't know if you remember. Rock <laughs> Nasty <old> Gary? <laughs> Yo, you were Master nasty Gary. For, like, oh, Master. I thought you said nasty. I was supposed to be like, yo, you were right, nasty. Right. It was like Master Gary. <laughs> <laughs> but I was that, but at the end of the day, I was really crazy in my mind. So when I switched over, you know, she said, God, you know, you got you got to change your name, Gary. I'm like, well, I don't know why I'm turning my name to you. I mean, DJ, I rock. She said, no. She prayed about it. She came back. She said, God gave her a rock. I'm DJ, I rock Jesus. But here's the thing. We were going to spell it with a DJ. I R O C with a J and then an S U S. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. You heard Christ said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll uh -oh. be ashamed of you. Wow. So right then it was like DJ I Rock Jesus. Like DJ I Rock Jesus. So she, God gave her that name to give to me. Wow. Well, your wife was just instrumental, just super instrumental. Oh, yeah. God. Uh, oh, man. I'm telling you, she was. She was. She was. God really used her to. Do what she did. I love it. So what what's what's um what's happening with your ministry now? I mean, um you you're not only a DJ, you don't only produce mixtapes, like you're really making um noise for the kingdom. So talk to us about some of what you're doing. Well, what I'm doing now, you know, I DJ at different churches, I travel a lot, or different churches. I, I talk to the youth about music, 
you know, about, the, you know, about gospel and things like that. But right now, I mean, I'm doing my mixtapes and my shows because I'm at home now, so I really can't do anything. So I get online and I do ministry online with the mixes and stuff like that. And, and, and also I help the artists out. That's what I'm doing now. Nice. And I do a lot of traveling too before all of this. Nice, nice. So how can people, well, first of all, can we purchase your mixtapes or do you just have them for download? They're all free. Everything is free. Well, how can we, how can we connect Everything with you? How can we get your mixtapes and stuff? Well, you, all you got to do is go to djirockjesus.com, right? And so my mix cloud is DJ I Rock Jesus. DJ I Rock, well, that's perfect marketing. Good stuff. Like, it's easy to find you. <laughs> I love that. Like, I'm a marketing yeah, everything. <laughs> all my social media is DJ I Rock Jesus. Everything. Good stuff. Email, Instagram, that's everything smart. is DJ I Rock Jesus. Y'all, so nobody has an excuse why they can't find you. Why they, you know, perfect marketing. No excuse, no excuse. I, so <laughs> I know, I know I have artists that are tuned in. I know I have artists that are either watching or they're, yeah. they're on the radio. They want to know how can they submit music for potential inclusion oh. on a mixtape? What do they do? Oh, real easy. Email me at djirockjesus at gmail.com. So let me, let me just ask you this um, before I let you go, because you are a legend in the industry and you have clearly worked with people on both sides of the coin, um, you know, sides of the fence or, or what have you. What do you see that artists are doing wrong? Like wh where can artists level up their game and up their game now than you know, what it used to be back in the day? Be themselves be themselves so a lot of artists imitate other artists they mm. try and do what that artist is doing they can't do what the artist is doing because that artist is called to do what he's called to do so find out what you are called to do and who you are and do that and then it would change a lot for them so a lot of time when people try to imitate somebody they say i don't, I don't need a fake jay-z or a fake beyonce or a fake drake I, we already have that yeah so just be yourself and take care of the rest that's it that's be it. Yourself. everybody's copying everybody right now like, what is that about? It gets on my nerves so bad. But, you know, I find it's... it's it, it, me too. It gets on my nerves so bad. And then some of it, too, I think is industry, depending on what industry you're in. Yes. I don't want people to think that I can't stand yes. Black yes. church, but I, but I see it a lot in, in our culture <laughs> that we almost require artists yes. to sound a certain way, to present themselves a certain way. And the consumer actually won't even... They don't, you, when you are able to, when we're able to go back to church, a lot of times you don't see folks stand up for people that sound different, you know, and, and so you, ha we have, we have created a culture where people feel like they have to um, model what everybody else is doing and they have to sound like everybody else. But at the end of the day, we really don't want that. It's just so weird. You, you don't need, right. You don't need to do that. Cause I try not to do that. I watch a lot of DJs. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a, I'm an all right DJ. But I'm, I can't imitate what they're doing. You know what I mean? And one thing God told me a long time ago was I had this vision, and it was me and my wife, and there was a ferry out there. Everybody was running to this one ferry, just running to it. I didn't have no money, so I was trying to borrow money to go to the ferry. God told me, look where that ferry is going. Mm. I looked at the ferry. It was going nowhere. He said, so look at everybody else. They're going to that same ferry, and it's wow. not going anywhere. So when I'm saying what I mean by that is everybody's doing everybody's doing the same thing and nobody's going nowhere. So a lot of artists get frustrated because nobody listening to them. Their music is not selling. They're not doing shows because you're copying someone else. Be who you are. Be who God called you to be and just be that. Absolutely. That's, that's all your own saying. anointing. So um, yeah, a, a few minutes ago, you mentioned the fact that now you are working with artists and you're helping them. What are some um, services that you provide for artists? Because I know somebody's going to want to talk to you because the one thing I'm hoping that people understand is that you literally have a 40 year career and you're still relevant. Like, yeah. I mean, you're on my show. I mean, oh I, my God, I'm turning 40. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. And I'm grateful hey, for it now. I'm finally blessing. walking in it. But I just saw you on the, you the show of someone who I, I think she either early 20s or even a teenager just last night. So you're relevant to everybody. Yeah. And so I know somebody is going to be tuned in and they're yes. going to want to know how do I work with DJ I Rock Jesus. Yeah, just, I just email me. I'm here. I'm here for everybody. Just email me. 
Email me at djrockg at gmail.com. I, I thought about it, but some artists don't want to listen. Okay. See, that's the problem. Some guys listen. don't want to listen. They, you try to tell them something, they're like, well, God told me to do it this way. So when somebody tells me God told them to do it, I said, okay, all right. Is this, I mean, this what God to told you? Sometimes it's self. Yep. Right. I'm not going to argue with you, but sometimes I know it's self too. You know, you're hard here that you don't want to do it because you want to do it your way. I mean, I do talk artists off and on, tell them what they can do and with their sound and things like that. Those that want to listen. Yeah. I love that. But that's I love free. That. I don't charge for that. Oh, man, that's awesome. That's a blessing. You Because yeah, I want them I want them to be great in what God called them to do. I, I think that's definitely, that's, that's a blessing. And, um, you know, I really appreciate you just taking your time to hang out with me tonight and... Uh, this has been awesome. No, this has just been awesome. And I I, I love yeah, your testimony. I had a blessing. This is a blessing. Yes. Yeah, you were such a blessing. And I, I'm really excited that you were here. And for for any artist that you you need some tutelage, but you're willing to listen, like you're open and you're willing to listen. Yeah. DJ I Rock Jesus, 40 years in the game, y'all, and, and just getting started. Just getting started. Connect with him, DJ just I Rock Jesus dot com uh hit him up on all his social media yeah. same stuff first of all that's a lesson all by itself that's called marketing make sure all your stuff is the same it makes it yeah. easy for people to connect with you dj i rock jesus at gmail.com all right y'all i want you yeah. to make sure you tune in same time same place with the tamika hall experience and y'all have a blessed day